How you doing guys, welcome to another video. This is still topic one, we've moved into the gases and there's some really good demos for this section of the course, so make sure you hit your teacher up to do some of them. Let's go. Okay, so volume 13, what is the molar volume? And we talk about Avogadro's law, we look at molar volume and then we do some examples with some calculations. The IB understandings, applications and skills focus around Avogadro's law for the mole relationship between gases and we discuss this idea of molar volume of an ideal gas. So what is the theory of a gas? Okay, well the kinetic molecular theory is how we explain the behaviour of a gas. And we say that the gas particles are in constant random motion colliding with each other and the walls of the container. And you can see on that little diagram that they do, they bump into each other and the walls of the container. The volume occupied by the gas particles is very small when we compare it, compare it to the total volume of the container. We also say that the forces between the gas molecules are negligible, so there's very little forces between the gas molecules. The collisions are elastic, that is no energy is lost, and that the average kinetic energy, or how fast the particles move, is proportional to the kinetic, to the temperature. So the higher the kinetic energy, the faster the particles will be moved. Now the absolute temperature is measured in Kelvin, which we'll talk about later. So what are some of the differences between a liquid and a gas? Well, a liquid, its volume remains the same no matter what container you put it into. It will take the shape of the container, whereas a gas, its volume will change depending upon the container. Diffusion is the property of a gas where it goes from a high concentration to a low concentration. Now, when we talk about a gas, we're talking about ideal gases and their behavior, but no gas is actually ideal. We use this model to discuss the properties. So, so far we've looked at substances in terms of mass, but now we need to look at the relationship between a gas volume and the number of moles. So here's a little bit of an example. Consider that we have two jars filled with different gases, the flasks have the same temperature and are the same pressure and have equal volumes. We've got one gas container containing hydrogen gas, one bromine gas. So which jar contains the most number of particles? Well, at the same temperature and pressure, if they have the same volume, then those containers will contain the same amount in mole of gas particles. So this is a little trick. Under the same temperature and pressure, the gases will have the exact same number of particles. Their mole will be the same. This is an application of Avogadro's law, which says that equal volumes of gases at the same temperature and pressure contain equal numbers of molecules. And that leads us to an important understanding that at the same temperature and pressure, moles is proportional to volume. The more volume you have, the more moles you have. The smaller the volume you have, the smaller the number of moles. So we can say that volume is proportional to moles and we use this little proportional symbol to indicate that. <clears throat> so this has been developed into what we call the molar volume. Now the molar volume given the symbol V little m is the volume occupied by one mole of a substance at a given temperature and pressure. And there's two particular temperatures and pressures that the IB wants you to know about. Standard temperature and pressure, STP conditions, and standard atmospheric temperature and pressure, SATP conditions. Now both of these can be found in the data book. And at STP we've got 0 degrees Celsius and 100 kilopascals. That's our temperature and pressure. And for standard atmospheric temperature and pressure, it's 25 degrees and 100 pascals. That's the conditions. Now, from the data book, we know that one mole of any gas at STP occupies 22.7 decimeters cubed. And that can be found in the data booklet. If we're asked to calculate the volume of a gas at STP, we can use a simple little formula. Number of moles equals V, the volume, divided by the molar volume at that temperature and pressure. 
So N equals V over Vm. So an example would be to determine the volume occupied by 16 grams of oxygen gas at standard temperature and pressure, STP. As soon as you see the STP, you know you have to use the molar volume. So to do this calculation, we need to work out the number of moles of oxygen gas by doing the mass over molar mass to give us 0.5 moles. So we have 0.5 moles of gas. Now, how much volume does that occupy? Well, we've got to rearrange the molar volume formula to give us the number of moles times the molar volume and the molar volume at STP is 22.7 decimeters cubed per mole. So we do that multiplication and that allows us to determine the volume of oxygen gas at those conditions, 11.4 decimeters cubed or 11.4 liters. <clears throat> so here's another example. What volume of oxygen at standard temperature and pressure would be needed to completely burn one mole of butane? So for this one, we haven't been given an equation, so the place to start would be to write an equation for the combustion of butane. Remember butane, C4H10, it's combustion, so we add oxygen to the mixture, and that will form carbon dioxide and water. And we can balance those type of equations using the little saying called CHOD, balance for carbon, balance for hydrogen, and then if we've got an odd number of oxygens, we stick that oxygen, the number of oxygens out the front, which in this case is 13, and then we apply D for double, and double everything else. So we've been told that we have one mole of butane, and we need to work out the volume of oxygen that reacts with that one mole of butane. So we need to use the ratio in the equation to determine the number of moles. So we start off by using the equation to determine the number of moles of oxygen. So the number of moles of oxygen will be equal to the thing that we want, oxygen, so 13, over the thing that we've got or been given, 2, times by the number of moles of the thing that we know, and in this case, that's butene. So it's 13 over 2 times 1, and then I'll convert that to a decimal, which gives me 6.5 moles. So I need 6.5 moles of oxygen to react with that butane. Now I need to work out the volume of oxygen by doing the number of moles times by the molar volume. They told me that it was at STP conditions and the molar volume at STP is 22.7. So I multiply those two together to work out the volume of oxygen gas that would react with that butane. 148 decimeters cubed, which is equivalent to 148 liters. So here's one that's a little bit more challenging. Calculate the volume of oxygen needed to completely react with 150 mils of carbon monoxide. According to the equation, assume all volumes are measured at the same temperature and pressure. Now that last bit is very important, same temperature and pressure, but they haven't specified that it's either STP or SATP, so we can't make that assumption. But what we can assume that because they're all measured at the same temperature and pressure, volumes are proportional to moles. So if we have 150 mils of carbon monoxide, I can assume that that's like 150 moles. And then I can work out my X, my oxygen, by simply just using the ratio between the two things, because they're measured at the same temperature and the same pressure, so they have equal volumes, so that means I'm using my relationship. So I can simply go straight to the stoichiometry. The volume of O2, thing that we want, one over the thing that we've got, two multiplied by the volume of carbon monoxide, which allows us to work out the volume of O2 needed. Now this type of question only works when, you are, when all the volumes are measured at the same temperature and pressure and they don't tell us what the conditions are, but this is what they want you to do. So we need half as much oxygen as we do carbon monoxide, so that's 75 mils. So now we can have the limiting excess situation going on as well. 40 centimetres of carbon monoxide is reacted with 40 centimetres of oxygen in the reaction below. 
What volume of carbon dioxide gas is produced? Assume all volumes are measured at the same temperature and pressure. So same idea as the last slide, we're not given the conditions, so we need to assume that volumes are proportional to moles. But in this case, I need to work out which one is limiting first. <clears throat> So the way I would do that is pretend that volumes are proportional to moles, so the number of moles of carbon monoxide I have would be 40. I've got 40 centimetres cubed, so I can pretend that that's 40. Now to work out if that's limiting, I divide by the coefficient, which in this case is 2, and then that's going to allow me to compare the carbon monoxide and the oxygen. So that gives me 20. The number of moles of O2, well that would be 40 divided by its coefficient which is 1, so that would be 40. So from that I can see that the carbon monoxide is the limiting factor in this equation and then I need to use that to calculate the number of moles of carbon dioxide. But we're not, we don't want the number of moles, we want the volume, but volume is proportional to moles so I use the same idea. So the volume of carbon dioxide is equal to its stoichiometric coefficient 2 over the coefficient of the thing that we've got, 2 times by the volume of CO. So that just means they're the same. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. So that means the volume of CO2 produced will be the same as the volume of CO consumed, which is 40 centimetres cubed. Okay, volume 13, some top tips. Know when to use the law. That is when they say at the same temperature and the same pressure and know what VM and STP mean, especially if they use the term STP, they want you to use the VM value. Thanks for watching guys, don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time.